Hello everyone, my name is Lou Tumi Allen from the WNS Coding Reimbursement Committee. Uh, I am sharing with you a coding update. We have been using these WNS coding shorts as a vehicle to communicate small snippets of information that have increasing relevance. And there's nothing that has more relevance right now than the ability to include a decompression with an inner body fusion. That is the introduction of the 63052 and the 63053. The saga is uh, now over. Uh, we have been for a long time dealing with the inability to code a decompression code, in this case a 63047, with a 22630. Anytime we do an interbody fusion, we have lost, uh, for various reasons, in large part, the ability to uh, collect for the decompression. This did raise a concern because of the manner in which it was uh, conducted and that uh, we tried to capture a little bit of, of how, what transpired and more of a cautionary report and that was published in uh, neurosurgery in February of 2019. Uh, Dr. John Ratliff and Dr. Joe Chen and myself composed this. If you have any interest, this would be, uh, it's an it's a interesting historical uh, read as to how we got here. That uh, represented some of the advocacy efforts that eventually went to overturn what was an erroneous CPT assistant article that we were able to uh, uh, demonstrate a compelling argument as to why uh, the, uh, a decompression code should be uh, separately uh, billable to a inner body fusion code. And over the span of several years of advocacy efforts uh, and advocacy in the AMA and representation in the RUC, we were able to uh, succeed in uh, acquiring two additional codes that were uh, are now effective January 1st, uh, 2022, and that is the 63052 and the 63053. The CPT descriptor includes laminectomy, fastectomy, foraminotomy, unilateral, bilateral, which covers both T-lift and PLIF, decompression of the spinal cord, caught equina, or nerve roots, during a posterior inner body arthrodesis. Again, this could be a T-lif or a P-lif. Uh, that's at the lumbar single segment. If you're doing a single level, you're gonna do 63052. If you do a two level, you're gonna do 63053. The vignette specifically states that the condition of neurogenic claudication, lumbar stenosis, should be present in that individual, and therefore, in taking care of those individuals with lumbar stenosis and uh, uh, neurogenic claudication, it would be advisable to include that in the preoperative and postoperative diagnoses. Obviously, radiographic uh, evidence of that is uh, always an essential element of including that in the diagnosis and obviously the clinical history that we all obtain uh, from our patients and describing that in the history of present illness. And so once the, that element is there, along with the other uh, uh, radiographic uh, aspects that are seen. Those are described. In this case, it's a spondylolisthesis. And again, here, what is uh, the important sentence to read is that the uh, decompression uh, is more extensive beyond the typical dissection needed for an inner body arthrodesis, which means that it is more than just exposing the disc space by removing the facets. It's actually removing of the lamina, the ligament, and flavum, and decompressing the entire cauda because of the neurogenic claudication element. So defining the anatomy, here is a uh, illustration of what a uh, facetectomy for access to the disc space would look like. This is something where a 22630 would be how we would uh, capture that. We're accessing only, uh, we're moving bone only to access the disc space. Now, uh, this can be done through a unilateral approach uh, for it, which is the transferaminal uh, corridor as described by Harms, or it can be, as described by Cloward, a PLIF approach where uh, it is a bilateral inner body approach. But that is separate and distinct from the additional work that would be done. This is denoted, so the pink hue denotes what is done through a T-lift for access to the disc space. The purple is what is denoted for the decompression of the neural elements, removal of the lamina, removal of the ligamentum flavum, and thereby de addressing the neurogenic claudication symptoms. And in the context of a PLIF, it would look something like this. This is separate and distinct. The additional uh, purple work 
uh, the, what is denoted by the area of the laminectomy, that's the addition uh, that is separate and distinct with increased risk and potential complications. And so bringing this all together with a uh, case illustration, we have in this setting a 52-year-old woman with back pain, heaviness in the legs with any degree of ambulation, which is neurogenic claudication. She has a right radicular component, and she has distribution of pain that is 50% back, 50% leg. Her x-rays clearly demonstrate a spondylolisthesis with uh, a uh, instability. And so the diagnosis is spondylolisthesis, lumbar stenosis with neurogenic claudication and instability. Very similar to the vignette. The uh, ICD-10 codes that we would use in this circumstance would be an M43 TAC16, which would be the spondylolisthesis, M48 TAC062, which would be the lumbar stenosis and the instability at the M53 TAC. 2x6. This is an image of the uh, decompression that is done, which is uh, beyond what is needed to access the disk space. This is the type of decompression that we would anticipate uh, would be captured by the 63052. And then you have the post-operative imaging demonstrating the non-segmental instrumentation, the uh, placement of a peak in the body spacer, the bone graft uh, in the spacer, and anterior to the graft. Uh, and then the posterior lateral fusion that is performed. And then you can see how we now code this effective January 1st, 2022, uh, the inner body fusion in an individual in whom a facetectomy uh, was performed to access the disc space uh, and uh, a decompression uh, and placement of an inner body was performed into that uh, disc space along with decortication of the transverse process, placement of autograft and allograft bone onto the posterior lateral space. That combined posterior lateral fusion and inner body fusion is captured by the 22633. Now the laminectomy uh, component of the code is the uh, 63052. That is the additional decompression that was captured in that earlier uh, interoperative image, then the non-segmental instrumentation, the placement of the inner, uh, with the 22840, the 22853 for the placement of the inner body uh, for the peak implant, and then the morselized allograft and the local bone microscope code. That is uh, how we are now coding this effective January 1st, uh, 2022. If we are to do a two level, we would use a 63052 and a 63053. There are no modifiers that need to be placed onto these codes. These codes are add-on codes that are inherent to the use of the 22633. I hope you found this coding short of value. And if it was of value, you will find the managing coding and reimbursement challenges in neurosurgery even more so. We will be meeting in person in February and virtually in May and September. I hope that the opportunity will present itself to meet there. If not, perhaps at the AANS in Philadelphia, where we do have a coding course available. Thank you for your attention. I hope to be seeing some familiar faces at our coding courses in the near future.